You may have seen my video on my ESR meter that I made. Um, I uploaded it a couple days or three or some few days ago. And um, um, I recently, within like the day before yesterday or something like that, um, yeah, it was on the day before yesterday. I decided to, or actually I decided the day before that, but I didn't make do it until, ah, uh, enough about when I did it. I recently updated my ESR meter um, because I managed to have a microamp meter, which was in an old project I had made, which wasn't very good anyway, was sitting in there, and that thing was never really important in it anyway, so... It was a 100 microamp meter. Now, if you saw my other video, it, the ESR meter needed a 50 microamp meter. But luckily, since I was running mine on 9 volts anyway, and I had to because it would not work right on 5 volts, even with a 50 microamp meter, I don't think. Or at least it won't definitely... Anyway, it works with a 100 microamp meter fine. So, I built the ESR meter as a version 2 I used the same circuit I that I used in the other one I just took it out of the other one I had another identical project case so I had another metal plate and I was able to do a new version of it um, where it has a built-in meter so it's all the more portable and nice to have and here it is the little ESR meter there's the 100 microamp meter right there. There's the zero set button. The two terminals for putting your questionable capacitor or to put probes to test your questionable capacitor. There's the zero adjust knob, the on off switch, and the indicator light. And whenever I built it, it had, the stuff had to be packed in there so tight that I wasn't able to fit the 9 volt battery in unless I um, made a hole on the bottom so it gave me the idea of having like a battery holder there's a bunch of electrical tape there just to give um, friction to keep the battery from falling out and the battery is in there as far as it will go and it is up flush with the um, plastic as you can see so as you of course know the battery wasn't able to fit in originally because with the meter added and the circuit shifted over, it's packed in there, quite packed in there. And I was, whenever I made the SR meter, I was so enthusiastic and so excited about this achievement because ESR meter being such a useful tool as to be able to so much easier and quicker um, identify bad capacitors that even my cat meter could not identify. I was so excited when I made it, I decided I'd write up a little operating instruction set. So here it is, ESR meter. I even put a model number for it. I put E1A, and I would have designated the other original one to be just E1, by the Ricky Company, which is what I call my quote quote company when I build something I call it being made by the Ricky company so I did used MS paint to do the um, little labelings and um, and then I wrote up a little thing the Ricky company's new model E1A ESR meter is easy to use. It runs off one 9 volt battery and can test capacitors equivalent series resistance to check if it is a good capacitor or if it needs to be replaced. A good capacitor typically reads high on the scale whereas a leaky one will read low or zero. Now of course I did not design the circuit for it, I found it on the internet. Circuit design is is by Mr. Lawrence P. Glaster, but this is my little manual I wrote for my building of the ESR meter. Turn on the ESR meter and notice the pilot LED emit red light. So we would turn it on and we would notice it emit red light. I'm just excited. Turn, wait, 
Depress the zero set button. Turn the zero adjust, or right, the needle of the indicator should swing to the right. Turn the zero adjust to set the indicator so the needle sits exactly at 100. Which indicates zero ohms. The meter itself is a microamp meter being used for ESR readings and not for taking microcurrent measurements. The zero set button is only if measurements are to be taken with the capacitor directly across the terminals. If extension leads are to be used, it is advisable to zero the meter by shorting out the ends of the leads instead of using the button because of the internal resistance of the lead wires. The next page contains a table of measurement guides. And here we have table of measurement guides. Ohms, one ohm in the re meter reading, and you'll see all that there. And then capacitor and meter reading for a good capacitor. And you'll see all what we have here. And about the battery compartment, the rectangular opening on the underside of the unit is for placement of the 9 volt battery. When the meter can no longer be zeroed, even with the adjustment knob all the way up, the battery should be replaced. The battery box has electrical tape to supply friction to hold the battery in place. It is advisable to also wrap the battery itself with electrical tape to increase friction so the battery will not fall out. When replacing Take care not to apply tension of the connection wires as not to damage the delicate and static sensitive electronics. Of course, I made a mistake. I put tension of the tension connection wires. I meant to put tension to the connection wires. And here I forgot to capitalize the F on 100 microfarad. But anyway, those are, yeah. Can't always avoid making mistakes. So, if we were to put the connection wires on, touch the things together, we need to reset our meter so it's at 100, and then we'll get out a capacitor. And we'll trying to do this with one hand just does not go well. There. And you can see it goes just about to 100, indicating it's a very good capacitor. And this is a 100 microfarad 50 volt capacitor. Believe it or not, a vintage capacitor too, but still good. Now I want to give a shout out to Clyde Sight because of his Concord 350 auto reverse reel to reel tape recorder and also my own national reel to reel tape recorder that I got from the YouTuber Amberola 1B both had the same problem with the bias oscillator because it had a bad 4 microfarad 15 volt capacitor as can be seen here um, Clyde Sight you'll definitely recognize this capacitor and of course whenever we test its ESR Again, with one hand, which is hard. You can see the meter barely registers. And you can see clearly that this capacitor is bad and needs to be replaced. And also another bad capacitor which also came out of the same national tape recorder. Another nice thing about this ESR meter is it does not matter what polarity you put the leads on with a capacitor. And you can see it registers a little bit more but it still does not register very much and it still tests as a bad capacitor which would need to be replaced. And yet another bad capacitor if I can get these leads on 
You'll see it's a little better, but it's still not a good capacitor. This is a 2 microfarad capacitor. But if we see the table of measurement guides, a, it's a little above 1 microfarad and then between 4.7 microfarad. And it's supposed to be about higher than 85 or 90 to be a good capacitor. And as you can clearly see, it only goes up to just a hair past 50. So it's bad. This is my box of questionable electrolytics and then also low value um, ceramic capacitors. I just put a bunch of my questionable electrolytics in here. There's that cap. And they're not all questionable because this one here, which came out of an old Phillips tape recorder, which I thought was might have been a bad capacitor, was actually good. It tests good on the ESR. It's a 47, I'll show you. Here we go. You actually see it's a very good capacitor. So not all these capacitors are questionable. Questionable. But as you can see, the ESR meter comes in very handy. And if Clyde side, if you are seeing this video, um, I suggest to you find um, you, you search ESR meter circuit on YouTube, and I think it was the not on YouTube on Google or Bing. I don't remember which one I used. Might have been Bing. Um, and I think it was the first thing that came up was the site which um, is about a homemade ESR meter and it describes all about it and it has this schematic. I recommend you build it because if you build that, that will be a much better way of finding out a leaky capacitor and may greatly help in your tape recorder endeavors perhaps even in fixing that one RCA 3 inch reel to reel tape recorder with the bad amplifier that was used in the silly silly tape recorder video years ago because even if it's a DC bias recorder being a portable reel to reel I think it's well worth it to put in the effort to fix it because they're such fun machines such neat machines anyway I hope you enjoy the video of the CSR meter I just wanted to give you all an update on the SR meter situation and um, I should be having some more tape recorder videos come up I mean there's, uh, the, there's a recorder there's a cassette recorder by Phillips which is labeled as a Norelco that I got a couple years ago still haven't shown a video well almost a couple years ago still haven't made a video of it um, there's uh, there's other recorders I haven't made videos of that I need to make videos of so you know keep stay quote unquote tuned okay hope you enjoyed it sorry for my camera handling ha huh. anyway